All right, great. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today on our Transition Tuesday Step for Successful Secondary Transition Planning. And today our topic will be transition services and activities. And as you know, this is part of our Transition Tuesdays webinar series for, um, that we've been doing since last September. So welcome on this beautiful sunny day and it's springtime. I am Diane Perry. I am the parent advisor at the Peel Center. And I also wear the hat of a proud parent of a young man who um, had special education services while he was in school. He is now a young adult at age 28. It hurts me to say that age. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, uh, he gave me my career and I just love what I do um, here at the Peel Center. We, um, this graphic really represents the six key strategies that we use at the Peel Center. And this is what we do to accomplish all the work that we do. And in the center, you're gonna see the families and youth. And around that is the, all the communities um, and professionals um, that surround the families and youth with those um, services. And then around the outer service, outer circle is the uh, various um, components of what we do at the Peel Center. So we do lots of outreach. We provide tons of resources. Um, we provide individual assistance, which is what I do, the one-on-one -on -one assistance to families and trainings, just such today as what were webinars, um, leadership development and partnerships. So I really encourage everyone to go to the Peel website, check out all the information we have there. Um, and that, would, that will really, um, and I really encourage everyone to do that no matter what your role is here today. And my name is Michael Storr, and I'm a Knowledge Development Technical Assistance Specialist with the National Technical Assistance Center on Transition, the Collaborative, or NTAC-C, um, out of the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. NTAC-C is a federally funded project that supports state education and vocational rehabilitation agencies, local educational agencies or school districts, and VR service providers youth, families, and other secondary transition stakeholders in developing and implementing effective evidence-based practices that help students transition from high school to a meaningful adult life. As you can see, our um, goals of the NTAC, the collaborative, is that all students and youth with disabilities will be prepared to graduate from high school with the knowledge, skills, and supports for post-secondary education and training, competitive integrated employment, and community engagement. Great, thank you, Michael. All righty, um, before we go any further, I do want to introduce one of our special guest speakers that's been joining us on our webinars the past couple um, months. And um, Lily, would you like to do a little bit of a brief introduction of yourself? Sure, thank you. My name is Lily Sellers, and I am an intern and governing board member for the Pennsylvania Youth Leadership Network and have been helping present these webinars in my own experience as a young person with a disability. Great, thank you. And it's been awesome working uh, with Lily, I must say. So, all righty. Um, so, for today, um, today, our objectives will be that we will discuss what families need to know about putting this topic into practice and how this applies to the IEP, and not just families, but professionals as well, because I know we have lots of people with various hats that join us for our webinars. Um, we're also going to be discussing the importance of the services and activities during transition planning. We're going to go into detail about what that looks like and what you need to do and be thinking about. And then we'll also, we always been aligning this to the uh, transition discoveries guide, which was developed by collecting voices and experiences from youth, families, and stakeholders, and highlights the key elements that make a successful transition from high school to adult life. This is a collection of indicators and sub indicators that can be used as a roadmap to guide you to your transition plan. Okay. And some key reminders that we really feel are important and we do um, repeat these every time um, we have at the beginning of our webinars. And that is that the IEP team does not have to wait until um, 
their the child is 14. We always, I mean, that is the lead, that is the age um, in the law that you need to start transition planning. But um, as I've experienced and many other families have experienced, a lot of times you're planning even way before the age of 14. So you really want to be able to um, start thinking about that before 14, but that's when you actually have to um, start really putting things down on the IEP. And transition planning should be a coordinated effort where your LEA, the local educational administrator works with the families and other relevant agencies. The LEA is critical in helping families to access information to help navigate the resources that will be needed as their student transitions from school to adult life. Successful family involvement relies on meaningful collaboration with all stakeholders. stakeholders excuse me. Um, schools are required to coordinate transition services by linking families with all the various agencies and support services that are involved in a student's life. That is really what's going to be helping add to that successful transition plan. I always like to talk about that vision, you know, planning for the successful secondary transition begins with a vision. And that vision is for families to be thinking about where would you like your child to go? What, where do you see them after they leave, you know, the high school experience, you know, their high school, they get their diploma. Where, where are they going? Are they going to college? Are they getting a job? Where are they living? Things like that. And when I did a lot of this as a parent, you know, of course, David, my son, David was involved in all of that vision planning, you know, before when he was younger, I always shared what we wanted as a family. But then as he reached the secondary transition phase, he needed to take ownership of his own IEP and his services and where he wanted to go as far as his roadmap, um, as far as, you know, where he wanted to work, where he wanted to go to college, you know, where he wants to live, which, by the way, he's been always saying he wants to move out since probably middle school. So, um, and we're still working on that. We're still working on that goal, but it's, it's still a vision, right? There are still things that we, we work on even after they exit the school system, so. Now, as you know, this has been, we've been focusing, this has been a, um, a series, a webinar series, um, and there were eight areas of focus throughout this whole webinar series. And the Peel Center, along with NTAC, the collaborative, um, have been doing this really um, wonderful uh, collaboration of, of bringing all this information to families and professionals. And it has always been the fourth Tuesday of every month, and we'll be doing this um, through May. So we have two more yet to go. And if you, I know obviously if you're here today, you registered, but if you haven't registered, you can just go to our website, the Peel Center website, peelcenter.org, and you just register. And it'll take you to each one each month. You'll get uh, notices um, of when we're going to be having it as reminders once you're registered. So now we'll um, go over some of the other areas of focus. So thanks, Diane. Over the past five sessions, we presented information regarding youth self-determination and self-advocacy, the importance of understanding and engaging with outside agencies to assist with the transition process. We also have um, talked about understanding and using age-appropriate assessment for transition age students with disabilities. And then how to develop the three post-secondary goal areas for further training, employment, and independent living. And during last month's session, we talked about how to ensure students have a thoughtful course of study while in high school. These first five sessions, as Diane mentioned, are available at peelcenter.org under Transition Tuesdays, in case you've missed them. During today's session, we'll be presenting information regarding how the trans how transition services and activities can be aligned to post-secondary goals, and they should support the student's post-secondary goals of further training, employment, and independent living that lead that young person to success once they graduate from high school. Michael, I hate to interrupt you, but I forgot to mention to everyone that our PowerPoint is in your handout section in the in the panel there. If you if anybody here would like to follow along on our PowerPoint, please go to the handout link 
or the, the little link there on your on your tab tab on that and you'll be able to download our powerpoint sorry to interrupt you oh no worries thanks diane so as diane mentioned when she was going over the objectives for today's session uh, we do talk about and have during the last um, several of our sessions um, discuss transition discoveries and the transition quality empowerment project or TQEP and this is a project led by staff from the George Washington University in collaboration with the Peel Center and the Pennsylvania Youth Leadership Network or PYLN through funding provided by the Pennsylvania Developmental Disability Council and is designed to work with youth with disabilities their families and other stakeholders to enhance secondary transition programming and services while students are in school and who can increase successful students post school outcomes. Transition Discoveries is a program that is being implemented throughout Pennsylvania through the Pennsylvania Training and Technical Assistance Network along with the Intermediate Unit System um, to engage and support Pennsylvania's interagency partners. Included in this program is the Transition Discoveries Guide that contains nine secondary transition related areas that are further broken down into 55 sub indicators that can be used as a roadmap to guide a student's transition plan. Be sure to check out the Transition Discoveries website. Um, it's transitiondiscoveries.org and there's really amazing information and resources contained on that website. And then the next slide, we're going to look at what is available for youth and families and how this information is directly related to today's topic regarding uh, transition activities and services. So this slide outlines specifically the sub indicator areas that are addressed by transition discoveries that are directly related to transition services and activities that are aligned to post-secondary goals. These include sections on transition planning, post-secondary education and training, employment, and independent living and community engagement. So what exactly are the transition services and activities for a transition age student with a disability who has an IEP? So as we look at what are transition services and activities, let's take a step back and think about how we're assisting that young person achieve his or her dreams. One way is by structuring the courses that the student is taking along with the services and activities to lead to those post-secondary outcomes. This is also known as action steps or those directly related activities that will lead that student to those outcomes for further training, employment, and independent living. When we look at these activities, um, at least one, uh, so if you go to the transition section in the IEP in Pennsylvania, um, and there's the transition section or section three, we talk about having at least one service listed in that section that's linked to a measurable annual goal. And measurable annual goals address skill deficit areas, things such as reading or writing or behavior or organization. And then we look at having at least one activity. These are other activities, so not aligned directly to the measurable annual goals, but these are things that are gonna help that student reach their goals for further training, employment, and independent living. On this slide, it's important that we look at these differences between services and activities. Both need to be addressed for transition age students, but services are those things, again, that lead to measurable annual goals. So examples of those could be things such as building on vocabulary skills, um, looking at improving writing skills, engaging with pair, peers in their school, practicing self-advocacy skills. Activities, on the other hand, are those things that help that student reach their post-secondary goals. And oftentimes these are either a one-time event or an activity that might allow that student to gain additional information and knowledge. So these are things such as visiting a college or a job fair, uh, maybe having a job shadow experience in the community to see what different types of jobs are like, uh, talking with the guidance counselor at the school regarding their graduation plan, doing a seed your project or meeting with an outside agency such as an Office of Vocational Rehabilitation Counselor. 
As I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, the section in the IEP in Pennsylvania is Section 3, and we oftentimes refer to this as the transition grid. When you look at this, and we've talked about over the last couple of sections, uh, you had the post-secondary goal area, so whether it's further training, employment, or independent living. We talked last session about courses of study and having those listed, and now we're talking about looking at the services and the activities. And again, we talk about at least one measurable annual goal being referenced, and then at least one activity being listed in this section. So as we're looking at these activities, it's important to also remember that we need to consider all of the activities that are offered in that school. And these include those activities that are occurring in general education. So if they're in general education courses, such as English, looking at you know, the resume writing that may be occurring, or if the student is in a home economics class, looking at food prep, um, or looking at you know researching careers. It also means looking at activities that are provided by the guidance counselor in the high school and are offered to all students in the general curriculum. So are those being looked at and included in a student's IEP in the transition section? And then looking at all other school activities that could assist that student in reaching their post-secondary goals for further training employment, and independent living. And it's important that these are listed in the IEP. Um, in many districts, we'll often map out these activities by grade level uh, to align uh, for their students to make sure that they really are including all of the activities that the student can take part in to achieve their post-secondary goals. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Diane. Thank you, Michael. I also want to add that if anybody does have any questions throughout our presentation, please feel free to use that pane um, on, on your on computer there, the question pane, and feel free to hop something in there and we'll be happy to address our questions, um, if not throughout the presentation, definitely towards the end. So we encourage you to ask any questions. So um, now this is some examples of post-secondary education and training activities. Now, obviously, this is not an exhaustive list. There's just, you know, this is just a sampling of what some activities um, could look like in under this section of the IEP. Um, it's important to only list activities that the um, school district, the LEA, can support. So, for example, if, you know, um, you want to go talk, or talk, you might be talking at your IEP meeting about touring a college campus. If the school district may not be able to support that, then maybe you may rather want to say, you know, do an internet search of colleges because tours sometimes happen not during a school day. Sometimes they may occur over the weekends and things like that. So it's important that you think about, you know, the activities and really knowing that you'll be able to assist the student in doing those activities. But again, these are wonderful um, a, a list of ideas for you that we thought might be helpful. And then in the employment section of the um, IEP, here are some more examples of activities that you could be looking at. Again, this is not an exhaustive, exhaustive, exhaustive list. Um, now, there is um, a website, and I know that Michael is going to share a ton of resources towards the end of our presentation, um, but there are some wonderful websites that you can find other um, possibilities and um, different, uh, other ideas around examples of activities for employment. For example, the PA Career Zone um, is some place you can explore pathways to a career hub. So it actually goes to a hub and you, you can get some other ideas around that too. So that's, you know, something just to think about as you're trying to figure out what activities should we be putting in for employment. And then of course we have independent living. living. And the examples um, that we have listed here um, are just a sampling of what we, um, you know, thought we would offer. Um, schools do need to address independent living goals if there are needs. 
However, some students may also engage in independent living activities outside of the school setting with sometimes with other paid or some natural supports that they have in their community. If a student is engaging in these activities to address needs related to their independent living goal, and these activities should also be noted in the IEP and also um, a summary of some of that, that what's happening under in the present level section in the beginning part of the IEP as well. Okay. So one thing we want you to remember, we utilized this slide a little for the, for the last uh, session as well to kind of show you that there must be an alignment to those post-school post goals. And Michael really talked about that earlier um, in the presentation. And this is um, an example of a post-secondary goal after graduation from high school. Kevin has a goal of working as a sous chef in the deli of a local grocery store. And down in the middle, you see that course of study. And to the left, you listed the courses, which we talked about at our last session. So if you missed um, our webinar, that's what we focused on was the courses of study. So they are recorded on our website. So please, you know, if you missed that one, you can always catch it again. But today we're focusing more on the activities and really thinking about what will that multi-year plan look like? You know, uh, Michael suggested earlier that a lot of districts do go through each year, you know, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and you have each year listed um, about what you might be focusing on. And so here is a sampling of what that could look like um, pertaining to Kevin, who, want, who has this goal of being a sous chef. Um, now, activities including pre-employment transition services to be provided in collaboration with vocational rehab. So the Office of Vocational Rehab is usually involved at some point and they are also assisting in making sure that the employment goals um, and some of the activities or services are being um, implemented and this goes through each grade of what that could look like for kevin you know maybe that first year you know it's more mm -hmm. of this exploration about the uh, position of what he wants to do um, maybe there maybe he can already start with some work-based learning experiences in ninth grade and this is a great time for him to start working on um, in instruction in his self-advocacy where he's actually doing that as an activity. And then in 10th grade, you know, you up, you, you up it a little bit more where he's maybe job shadowing somebody at a grocery store or, um, you know, uh, at the workplace, there is some training to develop some social skills and independent living. Um, and then in the next grade, 11th grade, now is when you know he's doing some community-based vocational training, which means probably OVR is involved more at this stage of the game. And again, still keeping in with that self-advocacy as an activity, because that is very important um, as a young person to really know what they need to say when they're at a workplace. And then in 12th grade, maybe they have a paid internship at this point, and they're still doing maybe some job exploration counseling as well. So this uh, post-secondary goal is related to after graduation from high school, Camilla has a goal of working um, in the airline industry, possibly as a flight attendant, she thinks, right? So she's thinking about that. And again, we're gonna go through some of the activities for her in each grade. Okay, so as you can see for Camilla and the, her goal of working in an airline industry in ninth grade, she's working on some career assessments as some activities for her. Um, she's a, ex, exploring some other careers in aviation via ONET. I know lots of school districts utilize ONET and it's, it is a great resource. And I believe Michael might talk a little bit more further about that in our resource section of our presentation today. Um, and again, really important is that self-advocacy. You know, it's in, that is a really big piece uh, when you reach this age that you are self-advocating, understanding your disability. What are you going to need? What are your, you know, what are, what do you need to ask for? You know, not just in school, but when you're out there in the community. And so then in 10th grade, you know, Camilla is, you know, maybe a structured interview with a flight attendant. So she can, you know, that's the questions that or that she has in mind, you know, what, what it might be like to be a flight attendant, things like that. And maybe, you know, she's already doing some type of workplace readiness training. So there may be some training opportunities for her to take advantage of in 10th grade. And then in 11th, maybe she's job shadowing at an airport. 
um, and participating again still in those um, readiness training skills that we all need um, in order to get a job and, and keep it. And then in 12th grade, hopefully she's got that internship and hopefully it's a paid internship at the airport, um, but also continuing the job exploration counseling. Because as you know, a lot of students you know, and families have these dreams for fit for um, for themselves and for their child, you know, to do a particular job. And, you know, she, you know, mm -hmm. says possibly a flight attendant, but maybe she may find something else within, you know, the airline industry, but maybe not so much a flight attendant, maybe working at the actual airport or, you know, whatever. That's why you get to write all of the various activities at every grade level. So, you know, the student can continue to explore more and more of what and focus more on what they may want to do. So um, think about the young person that you're working with, whether that's your student or your son or daughter, and think about um, what you may need to do and what they can do to support themselves through the transition process. What activities might be appropriate for them, given their post-secondary goals across each of the grades? So across 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. On the next slide, we have a graphic organizer that was designed to help you and the student organize and plan for their future. And we kind of shared this with you on some of the slides that, Di that Diane just reviewed. So as we have discussed, this webinar series is designed to help you understand and support the student as they transition from school to adult life. On this slide, this organizer um, has at the top a place to put the student's post-secondary goal. Last month, we talked about the courses of study, and today we're discussing transition-related activities. And you can see there's a star next to the activities section, um, and that would be listing that multi-year plan. So it's a way of thinking about or organizing that transition process for a student. So now we're very excited to present our next section of today's presentation. If you participated in our past webinars, um, you'll remember Lily, who introduced herself at the top of today's um, session. And Lily is a dual enrolled student at Boiling Springs High School in the South Middleton School District and at Harrisburg Community College. Lily is going to share with us her transition activities along with those of Shania Jones. And as a reminder, Shania Jones is a student in the Pittsburgh Public Schools District. So now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Lily. Thank you. So my services and activities, um, starting out, I will continue to try different note-taking strategies to assist me in my post-secondary education. I've tried many different um, assistive technologies from using um, speaking tools that I can talk into and will switch into words. And I've also tried things that don't work, like a smart pen where I could record it and write at the same time. Um, but I've really focused in this year on typing and different strategies to help me type faster. Um, look into the Office of Disability, look into the Office of Disability Offices at my prospective colleges for possible accommodations. I've been looking into different housing options as well um, and what could work best for me. Have the opportunity to take my SATs. I did this um, this year and had a few accommodations for that. Um, people to help me um, write if I needed to because I um, can get very fatigued when I write. Take Take another career interest survey to continually assess my career interests. Um, that has definitely helped me a lot. I've really started to narrow down the field um, I want to work in after graduation. And so as my internship with PYLN has helped a lot with that. Have a complete and updated resume prior to graduation. I'm still working a little bit this year on really finalizing my resume, but I definitely have a very good draft to start with. Um, take an independent living survey. Um, I have not taken that at this time, but um, it's definitely something I'm going to bring up at my next IEP meeting. 
um, research outside agencies and supports that are available to assist me with my independence. Um, this year I have reached out to OVR and I'm taking first steps with that agency. Um, I believe they will be at my next IEP meeting, so I'm definitely excited to start that um, relationship and help me look into what I want to do after high school. So Shania services and activities. Shania will participate in the SAT exam, attend college fairs, complete assessments in Naviance. My school also uses Naviance and it has been a great tool. You can um, take different career and job assessments on that. And you can also look into different colleges too. There's a tool where you can compare different courses of like study, um, improve reading skills, have the opportunity to participate in promoting academic success in the PACE program, um, participate in Start on Success program. Um, and I was told this was in the Pittsburgh area and it's different transition classes. And that sounds really helpful and interesting. Um, attend a presentation on OVR, complete transition assessments to further explore employment goals, improve self-advocacy skills, attend IEP meetings, and improve budgeting and math skills. So just a few reminders. Even with the best plans, life changes. Adjust your plans as your needs change with time. Um, definitely this year, I think everyone can relate to having different changes. I didn't expect to be doing um, all online classes this year or even um, to be duly enrolled at um, my local community college, but it's actually been a really great experience for me. Um, remember that you are not alone in the process. Use all available resources and ask for help. Great, thank you so much, Lily, and thanks for sharing more information about your IEP and your transition process. Uh, really uh, it is helpful and appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule between your high school and college classes, so thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have to add, it's been a pleasure working with Lily on, on all of these uh, and hearing more about your career and where you're going with it. It's just simply amazing. So thank you, Lily. And actually, some of the attendees have also um, passed on um, their um, thanking you for your participation as well. So all righty. Um, next month, um, we're getting, we, we still have lots of some resources that um, Michael is going to be sharing with you. But next month, I wanted to give you a preview for April 27th, mark your calendars. We will be doing the measurable annual IEP goals and post-secondary goals aligned. So that'll be our next topic for next month. So um, please be ready and, and uh, mark your calendars, register if you haven't registered or get other people to register, that would be great. You can just visit our website down there, click on and, and backslash transition Tuesday. To review any of the handouts as well that we have been providing throughout the whole series too. Great, thanks Diane. So in this next section, uh, we're going to wrap up with some resources, but I wanted to take a little bit of time um, today's session to um, show or share with you some of the things that are happening in other states um, across the country. So at the National Technical Assistance Center on Transition, the collaborative, we work with all the states and territories in the United States, and there really are some wonderful things that are happening that tie directly into today's topic of looking at what activities students can engage with while they're in transition in high school. So uh, let's take a little trip across the country. Um, so we're first gonna start in talking about um, T-Folio. And T-Folio is a free transition portfolio tool for high school age students with disabilities. The tool was designed in Washington State through the collaboration of the Center for Change and Transition Services and the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation in Washington State. It aligns both IEP transition planning with VR's pre-employment transition services so that both educators and agency personnel can use it in working with students. 
Keyfolio has five units that correspond to the five required pre-employment transition services, and each unit is made up of lessons that contain a lesson guide and at least one activity. The lesson guides can be assessed from the lesson landing pages and either followed online or saved as a PDF form. The activities can either be filled in online um, or printed out um, and completed with pen and pencil, and students can also keep track of their own document using what they call a portfolio tracker. Um, and I didn't mention before, but all of these resources that we're going to be talking about in these next several slides are free. So it's another uh, a bonus that you're looking at what supports are available uh, for the students and the young folks you're working with. Next thing I wanted to mention is comes from West Virginia, and it's West Virginia's Pathways to the Future curricula. That includes lesson planning, lesson objectives, and detailed instruction for the facilitators to ensure students receive quality service provisions for secondary transition. This program includes sample worksheets, instructions, and resources embedded within each lesson. And the lessons can be adapted in terms of content and pace depending upon the individual needs of each student. I also wanted to mention that this particular website was built with accessibility in mind, and they tried to follow the Web Accessibility Initiative, or WAI, guidelines. So there's high contrast, alternative text labels, uh, the videos and webinars are captioned, um, and the website also offers an accessibility toolbar that includes a number of features such as reading aloud, um, a text magnifier. Uh, so again, there are just amazing, amazing resources through the Pathways to the Future site. Explore Work um, is another site we wanted to mention. Um, and Explore Work is a series of five online modules developed by the Workforce Innovation and Technical Assistance Center, or WINTAC along with Employment Resources Incorporated ERI and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Through Explore Work, students can create a profile where work can be saved and their progress tracked through certificates of completion. And all students' work is automatically shared via email, and that can be shared with a teacher, a VR counselor, or other providers. And this particular site is also available in Spanish. Next, we move up to Alaska, and I wanted to share with you, um, it's really uh, it's an amazing resource called School Store. Um, it is something that was developed by the Alaskan State VR Agency to introduce students to what it might be like to own their own business. This very creative curriculum includes five modules that introduce students to small business concepts as they work through setting a goal, developing a business plan, and putting the plan into action. Next, I wanted to talk and highlight something that comes out of the state of Nebraska and Nebraska Career Tours. And this tours, and this was something, especially during this past year with COVID-19 and really restrictions and getting out um, and actually having students experience different workplaces in person. This is a way that students can virtually tour various industries and look at various career pathways. And even though the video showcased different businesses and industries in the 16 career, career clusters in Nebraska, there is sort of a universal feature to this that it's applicable for students in Pennsylvania also. In addition to the tour of the businesses and industries, the videos also contain interviews with employees and managers discussing their work requirements, what education they needed for those jobs, their salary and job prospects. And the videos provide an accurate picture of today's workplace, breaking down stereotypes and assumptions while emphasizing the knowledge and skills required to be successful. And under the resource section on this site, there are also discussion guides that accompany each of the virtual industry tours. And the discussion guides include suggested activities and questions to help guide students learning, and each component of the guide can be used individually or modified to fit the individual needs of the student. The myfuture.com website was developed by the Department of Defense and features career, college, and military content 
allowing students to explore all possibilities and gain insight into those options of either going on for a career or college or, or looking at military uh, possibilities. My Future helps young adults plan their next steps in life by bringing together the most recently available information about colleges, careers, and military services opportunities. And they gathered this information from the US Departments of Commerce, Defense, Education, and Labor. In this site, it's very comprehensive and students can find information on more than 7,000 accredited colleges. And in addition to listing the college admission details, they also include average salaries and employment trends. This site provides advice on everything from how to take the SAT to interviewing for the first job, for those interested in armed services, how to prepare for boot camp. Um, and users are also able to find step-by-step -step planning tips um, using the, revert, the very robust search feature as part of this site. Think College is a uh, organization that's operated out of the Community Inclusion Center at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. Think College creates and curates over 600 selected resources on a wide range of topics related to post-secondary education for individuals with intellectual disabilities. Think College website includes some of the most frequently asked questions that families and young folks have about um, college options after high school. I just want to add that I love Think College. That I do share that resource a lot with families. Um, and they have all kinds of other resources on there, even helping families um, look at transition goals and what would a goal look like to start getting ready to go to college or get a job and things like there's just a ton of resources on there for not only families and, and um, students, but also for the professionals assisting them too. So um, I really recommend thinkcollege.net. Thanks. 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 Um, so the next, uh, resource that we want to discuss comes from the Office of Disability Employment Policy, or ODEP, and that's out of the U.S. Department of Labor. And this resource is a curriculum called Skills to Pay the Bills, and I know many folks have used Skills to Pay the Bills um, over the years, um, and it is a work readiness and interpersonal skill program for youth ages 14 to 21, including youth with disabilities. Soft skills are addressed in this curriculum and they're grouped into six categories with multiple lesson activities that are creative, they're hands-on, and they reflect universal design for learning principles. And the six soft skill categories include communication, looking at a individual's enthusiasm and attitude on the job, teamwork, networking, problem solving and critical thinking, and professionalism. The curriculum can be downloaded as one large document or individually by soft skill topics. There are also seven short two to three minute videos available that provide a synopsis of the curriculum and one video for each of the skill categories. Reality Works provides free employability skill lessons which were created to help teach students the important soft skills needed to prepare for a career. Each lesson begins with an overview, lesson objectives, and a lesson at a glance table, which lists the lesson activities, materials required, and suggested preparation steps, and also the approximate time it would take to complete. The overview is followed by the actual lesson, and most lessons are designed to be completed within 45 minutes. Every lesson begins with a focus activity intended to capture students' attention, and this may be in the form of a small or large group discussion, a game, or a review of previous lesson information or demonstration. The learn activity in each lesson varies in its presentation mode. It may be a PowerPoint or a group activity or a demonstration. And then the majority of the lessons also end with a summarizing activity intended to briefly review the lesson's key messages or main points, or if it's the last lesson in a unit, the summarized activity also serves as a unit formative assessment. The student scores on these short assessments will help determine which concepts or skills they still need to work on. The final resource that I wanted to mention today is uh, Florida's Project 10. 
In Project 10, Transition Education Network serves as the primary conduit between the Florida Department of Education and their Bureau of Special Education Services. And it's um, relevant for school districts and, and VR staff and other stakeholders in assisting students in the transition process. The Project 10 website contains a lot of excellent resources and information, primarily focused on training and supports um, for Florida school districts, but also all stakeholders. And I want to just highlight a couple of things that are on that site. So there is an employment readiness checklist for students with disabilities exiting high school. Um, it's a self-assessment tool that can be used to determine the status of a young person's employment readiness. It can also serve as a guide for further employment preparation when used to identify the experiences that have been developed as well as those that a student still needs to work on. The website also includes sections on independent living, and these focus on financial literacy, health, housing, leisure and recreation, and transportation areas. So those are really just a few resources. There's a lot more if you go to our website, uh, which is uh, transitionta.org. Uh, we do have links to other national resources, but I wanted to highlight some of those because they do try, tie in directly to today's topic, um, looking at transition activities that students can work on in grades nine through 12, 12 plus programs and in middle school. So as a reminder, and as I mentioned, um, I work for the National Technical Assistance Center on Transition, the collaborative. Uh, we are a newly funded federal center and we do our website. Um, we have our new landing page up. So if you go to transitionta.org, um, you can link to a lot of the resources that I just mentioned, uh, but check back uh, to that site. We're going to continue to develop it, uh, flesh it out as uh, the, the year progresses. Um, also, if you have any questions, you can contact us at ntac-collab at uncc.edu. And finally, if you haven't done so already, you can sign up for our listserv um, by going to the bottom of our homepage, transitionta.org, and click join. Um, that will give you a weekly email um, sent, an email blast of uh, a variety of different resources and activities that are coming up around the topical area of secondary transition. With that, I'm gonna turn this back over to Diane to bring us home. All right, thank you, Michael. And thanks for all those resources, that's amazing. Um, and I'm sure hopefully that's helpful for our audience today as well. So again, we thank everybody for joining us today um, and for our webinar series. I know a lot of you, um, have been joining throughout this whole series. So um, again, mark your calendars for April 27th. Uh, please feel free to um, you know, visit the website, uh, Peel's website, peelcenter.org. We also um, have a connection to, we talked earlier about the transitiondiscoveries.org as well, where we're taking, you know, we're focusing on the, in the indicators that are in there, the sub-indicators too. Um, and there's lots of resources on transitiondiscoveries.org website, and we are connected to them now as well, like so you can go from our website to theirs. And um, again, I mean, there is a lot of great information out there for transition. Navigating it sometimes, I know, can be a little bit difficult. Um, and I do just want to put a quick plug in because next month we might be able to give you more information. But there, um, the patent, patent.net in Pennsylvania is doing their annual transition conference as well. So they're looking for um, the, re the proposals. They're starting to work on that conference already and we'll have that to look forward to in the summertime. That's why Michael and I are gonna end in May because then you'll be able to you know, participate in their annual conference as well. Hey Diane, I did wanna to mention too, next month on April 8th um, in an announcement, I think it's probably coming out today, the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation, or OVR, and the Pennsylvania Department of Education, Bureau of Special Education, um, signed a uh, joint memorandum of understanding or an interagency agreement about the collaborative efforts that OVR and education are working towards in the state of Pennsylvania. So on April 8th is going to be a rollout uh, webinar for that, followed by two additional webinars, uh, one later in April and one in May, 
um, talking about interagency collaboration. So you can find out more information on that whole series on the patent website. That's great. Thank you, Michael. And as I'm looking at the question pane, I think we answered a few questions here and there. So I don't know if there's anybody else that has any other questions, please feel free to put them in the question pane and we'll be happy to answer them. We'll hang in there for a couple more minutes to see if there's any more questions. And again, we really thank you for joining us today. I see lots of thank yous to all those resources. They're really enjoying those resources there, Michael. So thank you for all of that. And lots of kudos to Lily as well. Um, enjoying having you on our webinar here. Um, let me see, is there anything? No, I'm not seeing any other questions. So I think that's the end for today. So thank you everybody, enjoy the weather. Thank you, thanks Diane, thank you Lily. Thanks Michael, thanks Lily.